A mobile drone team from Ukraine's 72nd Mechanized Brigade, with its DJI Matrice 300 improvised, bomber, and a technical, truck. After a summer of grinding attrition warfare, Russia's invasion of Ukraine entered a dramatic new phase this fall. In a stunning battle of maneuver, a Ukrainian counteroffensive routed Russian forces in Kharkiv province, and then northern Kherson province. Kyiv's battlefield fortunes have so improved that many analysts believe the forthcoming infusion of poorly trained Russian conscripts can only delay eventual defeat. Nevertheless, Putin has doubled down on his calamitous war by announcing a partial mobilization aimed at conscripting 300,000, and possibly many more troops for Russia's increasingly depleted military. He also has ordered missile, manned bomber and drone attacks on major Ukrainian cities and infrastructure. Unmanned aerial vehicles large and small continue to play a dominant role in this terrible conflict. Missile-armed unmanned combat air vehicles, UCAVs, and loitering munitions have shown their value. Russia has been running low on conventional standoff-range missiles it can only build in single digits monthly, prompting it to purchase hundreds of kamikaze drones from Iran and fly them into action. Starting in September, at least 200 have carried out attacks on Kaviv, Odessa and beyond. Also disruptive has been the adaptation of cheap, commercial off-the-shelf, COTS, drones by both sides to execute surprisingly effective tactical range strikes and, even more lethally, to acquire targets for artillery fire of unprecedented precision and speed. This has resulted in an indirect fire-centric battlefield, in which even main battle tanks are more likely to be knocked out by drone-assisted howitzers than by anti-tank missiles, airstrikes and enemy tanks. Events are unfolding rapidly on the UAS front. In mid-October, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky claimed Russia plans to order 2,400 more loitering munitions, indicating a desire to sustain a campaign of strategic attacks on Ukrainian cities and civilian infrastructure, even as both sides have become much more effective at destroying them. Are also accounting for many drone losses. Though many drones cost less than the missile fired at them, the potential destruction and accurate artillery strike called in by a drone could wreak makes it worth using whatever means at hand. Still, the importance of fielding more diverse and cost-efficient counter-drone weapons is clear. Drones have been destroyed by small arms fire, flak, cannons and jet fighters. Supporters of Ukraine are sending laser-guided rockets and vehicle-mounted jammers. Soldiers from both sides are employing counter-UAS guns often obtained outside regular military procurement channels. As small UAVs can be difficult to detect compared to manned aircraft, combat experience from this war arguably makes a case that even smaller tactical formations such as infantry companies should integrate lightweight radars and EO, IR sensors to more reliably detect nearby UAVs without depending on external air defense attachments. Despite, or because of, massive attrition, the demand from frontline troops for more drones is voracious. Russian military bloggers have fumed at the inadequate numbers of Orlan 10 ISR drones, reportedly often no more than one per battalion, the loss of which can be crippling. Russian forces are also heavily reliant on civilian donations due to a procurement gap pertaining to smaller, shorter-range ISR drones. A list circulating on Russian social media of suggested gear for newly conscripted soldiers recommends bringing a drone along with an extra pair of socks. The government of Buryatia, a minority region in Russia disproportionately represented among frontline soldiers, spent $3.4 million of its own funds to provide drones and other equipment to its soldiers, reflecting popular awareness that the Russian military is failing to adequately equip them. Russia's military is taking steps to procure more UAVs, but also is suffering a shortage